So this is the German's way of kind of organizing all these Jew of particles that were discovered. And there's really an underlying theory. The underlying theory to all of these patterns. So this is, you know, what you would call baryon decapolet or decupolet, decupolet. Um, so it's a normal way for the path, but you know, that's just mysticism inspired the name. It's not actual physical law. <laughs> so the underlying theory is what, well, this is what German called it. This is around the time when people were becoming very inventive about names. He called, he based on all this on a model he called quark model. And uh, I guess the story behind the name is really, um, I don't say, want to say boring. I don't remember all the details. I only know it comes from some English poem. And the inspiration name, the crucial thing is that his idea was that these are made up of three more elementary particles. That neutron is made up of three particles called quark. Proton is made of another three particles called quark. And you can kind of see why um, he would, why three would be the number. Because when you look at the spin here, spin three halves. So it must contain spin half particles in there somehow, right? How many spin half particles do you need? Minimum. To make a spin three halves. You need minimum of three spin half particles, right? Now, can you get spin of one half with the three spin half particles? Right, yeah, two of them add up to zero, add one more, you get spin one half. So assuming that these are both made up of same kinds of elementary particles that have spin one half, uh, would fit both of these patterns. And, um, and so um, we do these more mundane, non-strange particles. He associate, um, we associate them with mundane, unstrange quarks. We give those quarks names up and down. So these are made up of up and down quarks. So U for up, D for down. And there, there is explanation behind why they are called up and down. It's a um, kind of illusion to I idea of isospin that we never talked about, that, but it's related to spin. Um, so the way I remember it is, proton is the isospin up particle, so it has more up quarks than down quarks. Proton has quark content of two up quarks and one down quark, because it's the isospin up uh, from the old terminology. Neutron is the isospin down particle, so it has one up quark and two down quarks. So that ISO spin adds up to that. Uh, but that's in the old terminology. So these uh, um, D quarks, they are, I guess, let me see if I can remember it. So this uh, delta plus plus, it should have three of quarks. And I guess I keep just adding down quarks to that. Um, wait, is that right? Three of, I, I think that's right. And this will be two ups and a down quark but somehow combined in a way that's different from proton. Um, and spin zero, it should have one up quark and two down quarks. And this should have three down quarks. All right. Um, now, this is uh, how he, um, this is the, so to account for this strangeness, Gelman introduced a new kind of quark. This is the new kind of quark that would be associated with this approximately conserved quantity. So strangeness of minus one is associated with a, what we call strange quark. <laughs> That's really where the name comes from. So um, this is the strange quark and um, I don't know if you, you can well, uh, you can kind of um, guess at some of the properties of um, these quarks. Let's start out with the up and down quarks. So suppose someone asked you, what are the charges 
of these up and down quarks, how would you answer it? What's the charge of down quark? Do you have anything here that you can look at to infer what the charge of down quark must be? Negative? It, well, it's a negative sign, but I also want the magnitude. One third. One third, yeah. You are looking at this delta minus, right? So if it's out of ma being made out of three down quarks, then this down quark must have charge E of minus one third E. It has fractional charge, so we've been calling E elementary charge, but well, it has a third of E. <laughs> Um, all right, so how much quark should, um, so how much charge should the up quark have? Two thirds. Yeah, two thirds. You can do it, once you have inferred the charge of down quark, then you can do it with any of the particles. Um, but charge that's consistent with overall charge is plus two thirds E for the up quark. So, and once you have that, then all the other patterns fit. It explains why there's delta double plus, but no delta double minus. Because if you add three of the up quarks, then you get plus two E. But when you add three of the down quarks, you don't get plus two E. Um, so with that in mind, now with these particles, we are trying to build them with only one strange quark because it has only one strangeness, which kind of means we already know uh, a part of char uh, quark content of these particles. So this must have one strange quark, one strange quark, and one strange quark. Um, so the thing with plus one charge, how many of the other, so it must end up with the three quarks. So the other two quarks, which, which of these do you think it should be? Two ups, one up and one down, or two downs? Oh wait, do, would you know? I guess. Let's say um, this is the most positive one possible, right? So let's just say two ups. We want to make it as positive as possible. So two ups. Here it's slightly less positive. So let's say up, down, and strange. And here, I guess it's the most negative one. So two downs. So once you inf uh, guess this, what would the charge of the strange quark be? Yeah, negative 130. So charge of the strange quark is the same electric charge as charge of the down quark. Okay. And once you have figured that much out, then the rest kind of fits in. With the C baryons, it has two strange quarks. Um, so SS. So this must have one up quark. So it has up to neutral charge. This has two strange quarks and one down quark as up to negative charge. Um, same thing here. I'm not repeating it here because you get the same thing. The only, these are the excited states of these. Um, but the thing that's new here is now this is the particle that must have three strange quarks, explaining its a strangeness of minus three and explaining what else? I don't know, it's a charge of minus one. And at this point, you would infer that this additional masses of 150 MeV, that must be the how much heavier strange quark is compared to up and down quarks. So that's the underlying quark model. Um, and when you first look at it, it's a, it, it, it is a nice model. It, fits all the patterns we see, it explains everything, and once again, the most importantly, he predicted the existence of the omega baryon and experimental to when, when not looking for it, and in like within two years, they found it in one of the cosmic ray tracks. Uh, following the instructions of Gelman, um, like these are the kind of interactions that must be happening before this can be produced. 